Ladies and gentlemen, it's beer o'clock, but don't disappear right away. It's the second Pacific Island playlist. Just to remind you, the conceit is you're on a Pacific Island. The distractions and the nonsense of life have fallen away. What is your legacy? What is your special skill? And I would just ask if you uh, send your Pacific Island playlist to hashtag Pacific Island playlist, we will save it. For the Australians in the audience, I would just encourage you to expand your musical canon beyond Kylie Minogue and the Wiggles. <laughs> Gives me enormous joy to introduce our second castaway, Louise Sayers. I have heard that piece of music millions of times. I've never properly listened to it. Why is it so special to you? Well, I think it was lovely just hearing some people singing to that song. Um, it's significant to me because my parents loved Cat Stevens, so I grew up with hearing his beautiful music. Um, but it resonates also with me because it deals with some topics that I'm very passionate about, um, especially in Moonshadow around grief and loss, um, about finding hope in tragedy, and also putting life into perspective, which I think we do on a daily basis in critical care. Wonderful. There are only two unavoidables in life, death and Roger Harris. <laughs> Our lives are hatching, matching and dispatching. We have midwives for birth, but we don't have them for death. Why don't we give this the due respect, the ceremony and the significance that it deserves? Um, that's a very good statement, and I hope to one day see uh, death and the dying process honoured just as much as birth. Um, I think in the Western culture we fear death and dying. It's very isolated to the hospital setting, so it's a topic that's not discussed widely um, that much in the community. So I think that's the reason why. But I think there is a shift, and, and hopefully in the future we'll see more people talking about death and dying, and so it's not such a taboo topic. Now, I've been told you can't always save a life, but you can typically save a death. Please give the audience something that you've done and something that they could do to make things a bit better. Um, well, I, I'm going to start that off by saying I work with incredible doctors, nurses, and social workers in the intensive care unit at the Royal North Shore Hospital. And I think what we do really, really well is we take the time to listen to patients if they're not ventilated um, and families. And I always say something horrendous could be happening outside those four walls during a family meeting. But in that space, the doctor and the nurse and everyone sitting in that room is so present listening to the family, um, like nothing else outside that wall matters. Um, and so I think uh, it's not only time, but communication. We communicate with our families and our patients incredibly well. And so once again, it's just um, being able to have really good quality and putting the um, uh, paying it respect that it deserves around good quality of end of life. That's wonderful, and I understand your unit has gone a step further and even prepared bereavement bags. Yeah, so this is um, a lovely little initiative that I've been involved with, which is classified as a compassionate communities project, where we um, have a gorgeous group of old ladies, well, I shouldn't say old, um, <laughs> ladies who have all lost their, um, their husbands, and they get together once a week, and they sew beautiful handmade bags and we actually give them out to uh, people who uh, die in the ICU. We put their belongings in these bags and give them to their, to their family members. And it's just, just once again, it's really a moment of compassion. It's a small one, but it can make a big difference rather than handing their belongings back in a pink plastic bag, which is just horrible. It's wonderful. So it's honouring the patient. It's wonderful, Louise, and I think something we could all take home with us. We have about 30 seconds to go. Please tell us about your second piece of music and why that's special too. So I feel like I'm a bit of the Grim Reaper at work and, um, and I think even just from the talks today, one thing that's really evident is that we need to have a really good sense of humour in critical care. I think it keeps us in, in the job and the long, in the longevity of our jobs. Um, so I've actually picked Always Look on the Bright Side of Life by the Monty Pythons. <laughs> Monty <Cute> Python. music. <laughs> Whistle, and this'll help me turn out for the bay. Bang. 
And that's Wednesday. Thanks very much.